So a point estimate is just a single value or point used to approximate a population parameter. In this section, since we're talking about proportions, we're going to talk about approximating a population proportion. So the sample proportion, which is represented by P with a hat on it, so we call it P hat, is the best point estimate of the population proportion P. And if the P hat value is not given to us in a problem, we can calculate it by taking x and dividing by n, where x is the number of individuals in the sample with the specified characteristic, and n is the sample size. Another way to think about this is if we think of a sample as a binomial experiment with n trials, then the sample proportion p hat is the proportion of successes. So it's the same as the number of successes, x, divided by the number of trials, n. Here's an example. In a Pew Research Center poll, 70% of, of 1,501 randomly selected adults in the United States believe in global warming. Find the best point estimate of the proportion of all adults in the United States who believe in global warming. So here when we're asked to find the best point estimate for the proportion of all adults, that's asking us to find an estimate for the population proportion. The sample proportion in this problem is 70%, or if we write that in decimal form, it's 0.70. This is the best point estimate for the population proportion given the sample data that we have. Here's another example. In July of 2008, a Quinnipiac University poll asked 1,783 registered voters nationwide whether they favored or opposed the death penalty for persons convicted of murder. 1,123 were in favor. Obtain a point estimate for the proportion of registered voters nationwide who were in favor of the death penalty for persons convicted of murder. Again, what we're asked for here is a point estimate for the population proportion. So to estimate that population proportion, we're going to use the sample proportion from the sample data that we have. Our sample proportion p hat is going to be 1,123 divided by 1,783, or 0.63. This is the best point estimate for the population proportion of registered voters who are in favor of the death penalty for persons convicted of murder. Again, this is based on the sample data that we have. So let's talk about what confidence intervals are. A confidence interval, or an interval estimate, is a range or an interval of values used to estimate the true value of a population parameter. A confidence interval is sometimes abbreviated as CI. The confidence level of a confidence interval is the probability, 1 minus alpha, that the confidence interval actually does contain the population parameter, assuming that the estimation process is repeated a large number of times. When we're estimating a population proportion, again, the sample proportion p hat is the best point estimate of the population proportion p. But since the sample proportion varies depending on the sample selected, an interval estimate or a confidence interval gives a range of possible values for the population proportion, along with a measure of how good the estimate is, the confidence level. The sample proportion will be in the center of the interval. The distance the interval spreads on either side of the sample proportion is called the margin of error. Here's an example. In a poll, 70% of 1,501 randomly selected adults in the United States believe in global warming. Based on this sample data, our point estimate for the proportion of adults in the U U.S. that believe in global warming is 0.70. The 95% confidence interval based on this sample data is from 0.677 to 0.723. The sample proportion is in the center of the confidence interval. The distance the interval spreads on each side is the margin of error. So what we're doing here representing the confidence interval is just giving the lower limit and the upper limit. And here's what it looks like if we graphed it on a number line. Here is our point estimate right in the middle of this, the confidence interval. Here is our lower limit for the confidence interval, which is 0.677 or 67.7%. Our upper limit is 
0.723 or 72.3 percent and the distance on each side that we go from our sample proportion in the middle is the margin of error. So we're going from our sample proportion down by whatever our margin of error is and also up. Now to interpret this, the 95% confidence level tells us that the probability of our interval actually including the true population proportion is 95%. So if we selected 100 samples and calculated confidence intervals for each one, approximately 95 of them would include the actual population proportion. The way I like to think about it is that 95 out of the 100 would be hits and 5 would be misses. So let's suppose that the true population proportion is actually 71%. Then approximately 95 of the 100 intervals would include the value 0.71, so they would be hits, and approximately 5 of the intervals would not include the value 0.71, so they would be misses. So let's say that we took three more samples and looked at the results and again we're assuming our true population proportion is actually 0.71. So here's one sample and the confidence interval. So for this sample the sample proportion was 0.696 again that's in the middle of our confidence interval and our confidence interval goes from 0.673 to 0.719. Here's the true population proportion so this one would be a hit because the population proportion is included in that interval. So that one's a hit. Here's another sample. In this one, the population proportion and the sample proportion were very close together. So again, this one is a hit. Here's data from a third sample. In this one, our sample proportion was 0.736, and the interval goes from 0.713 up to 0.758. So this one actually doesn't include our population proportion of 0.71. So this one would be a miss.